In 1898, a well-known British physicist by the name of Franz Arthur Friedrich Schuster published two whimsical letters in the journal Nature. They were meant as jokes. He talked about this mythical substance that he called antimatter. He discussed anti-atoms, uh, anti-solar systems, and even an anti-universe. And he suggested that when antimatter met matter, the two would annihilate. He didn't have any evidence, or not even any kind of theory. He was just joking around. And I guess the moral of that story is, be careful what you joke about. In 1928, Paul Dirac was combining the equations of relativity with quantum mechanics in order to describe electrons that were moving very, very fast. The resultant equations allowed for the existence of an oppositely charged particle that was otherwise identical to an electron. That is, an anti-electron. And by cracky, four years later in 1932, Carl Anderson detected one of them little buggers. He called it the positron for positive electron. Since those days, we've come to realize that every particle of matter has a corresponding antiparticle which has the opposite charge and spin, but is otherwise identical. We've even managed to create and store hundreds of neutral anti-hydrogen atoms for minutes at a time. We keep them in a magnetic bottle. That chap Schuster was bang on right because when antimatter meets matter, well, it annihilates! <laughs> yeah, I mean, consider what happens when a hydrogen atom meets an anti-hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom is surrounded by a negatively charged cloud of electrons. The anti-hydrogen atom is surrounded by a positively charged cloud of positrons. The two clouds attract each other. And when they meet, the electron and the positron annihilate each other in a furious burst of energy, which leaves the two nuclei exposed. The nucleus of the hydrogen atom is a proton positively charged. The nucleus of the anti-hydrogen atom is an anti-proton negatively charged. The two attract each other, and when they combine, they annihilate in a much larger burst of energy. Oh, so like, boom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> boom. <laughs> or rather, bang, big bang. Because, you see, we believe that the universe began when equal amounts of matter and antimatter were created and then annihilated each other. Now, of course, that much annihilation would produce an immense amount of energy. And we see that energy. It's all over the sky. It's the cosmic microwave background. That's where all that energy came from. So we can see the results of that mammoth matter-antimatter annihilation in the sky. But that leaves us with an interesting puzzle. Indeed, it does. For of all of that matter and antimatter annihilated, why are we here? Remember the experiment from the previous episode that allowed you to tell which side of the mirror you lived on? Recall that it was the spin of a beta decay neutrino that an experimenter on one side of the mirror would detect as spinning clockwise, but on the other side of the mirror they detected as spinning counterclockwise? Well, it turns out that if that experimenter on the other side of the mirror happens to live in an antimatter universe, then he would detect the beta decay neutrino spinning clockwise. In other words, the two experimenters would give the same result. There would be no way to tell which side of the mirror either experimenter was on, or even if they were on different sides of the mirror. This symmetry is called charge parity symmetry, or CP symmetry. 
Indeed. Given CP symmetry, an antimatter universe on the other side of the mirror would be absolutely identical to a matter universe on this side of the mirror, and no experiment could determine the difference. So here's the weird bit. In 1980, James Cronin and Val Fitch were goofing around with a particle called a kaon. Now the kaon is a cool particle because it decays into its own antiparticle, an anti-kaon. And anti-kaons decay into kaons. So they kind of just bounce back and forth between the two states. What Cronin and Fitch realized is that the rate at which kaons decay into anti-kaons is different from the rate at which anti-kaons decay into kaons. What this means is that an experimenter, by measuring the rates of kaon decay, can determine whether they are living in a matter world on this side of the mirror or an antimatter world on the other side of the mirror. And that means you can tell which side of the mirror you're on. So that their CP symmetry don't work, do it? And so it was that when the matter and antimatter of the early universe underwent the vast convulsion of annihilation, a small asymmetry in the laws of physics allowed a tiny fraction of matter to persist. Us.